Good evening, y'all. It's another episode of the Late Night Vision Show. We've got episode 289, Big Thermal Optic Review, a very, um, I'd say, uh, very anticipated. And at the same time, this is probably the worst kept thermal optic release that we've <laughs> we've seen in a long time because we've known about this optic. Y'all have known about this optic for a very long time. But I'm not going to spoil uh, the surprise. I'm going to let our uh, the owner, the the captain of the ship, the owner of the company, um, our our Napoleon to our French army, uh, Mr. Jason Robertson, owner of Outdoor Legacy. Uh, good I, evening. Hold on, I've got yeah. so many the, questions. The, didn't 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 Napoleon like? Didn't they lose a bunch of battles? I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, he wasn't just, great. I, I'll wasn't say that great. he wasn't the best. Thank you. I, I couldn't <laughs> be the best. I, I couldn't be uh, you know George Washington he wasn't like, or you I know. mean no, I mean he wasn't like Genghis Khan. You know, okay. like conquering the whole world. I would have taken. Know, others, I'd have taken but, Robert E. Lee. I mean anything. You know. Yeah. I mean that's I understand but, that was a failed I mean, attempt, but still, I will say Napoleon probably is the most famous mediocre, uh, you know, commander. So <laughs> all I'm going to say is some, this whole is getting deeper. Right. <laughs> this is not getting better. So I right, exactly. guys, listen, we have a big review. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, first thing I'll just tell you what the review is. It's going to be the Pulsar Telos XP 50 and XP 50 LRF. So this is the brand new top of the line thermal monocular from Pulsar. This is replacing their Helion units. We're going to get into all this, but first I want to tell you a couple quick things. Uh, I want to put a commercial plug in here. If you are interested in a thermal or night vision optic of any kind, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. Give us a call. Hans and I, uh, Ashley, all of us are happy to talk to you, help you figure out exactly what you need. Uh, we use every single optic that we sell in the field test them, use them. We can tell you how they work, how they compare to other optics, and we would love to have your business. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here for you before the sale, during the sale, and after the sale with our customer service. Mm -hmm. Besides the Late Night Vision Show and uh, Hans's channel and Ashley's channel, all the content we're putting out, uh, we, have, we still offer you the customer service as well, uh, again, before and after the sale. So guys, OutdoorLegacyGear.com mm -hmm. or call us 877-350- 1818 commercial is over. Actually, not really. This whole show is going to be a commercial, but the, the main uh, in your face commercial. No, uh, Pulsar yeah, Telos. You know, you didn't, yeah. you didn't, uh, you, you didn't refer to Ashley with his correct first name, other, other salesman, other salesman. Yeah. Our, our, yeah. our other Ashley's salesman, his last Ashley. Name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that ought to be his last name. His first name yeah, is others. Yeah. Our other salesman. Others. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. uh, yeah. That's so right. yeah, we got to get. OS, we got to get his short, big OS. ugly mug back on this show or something. Get him on here Man. again. I know. Man. Talk bad about him when he's not here. That's right. well. So the I mentioned the worst kept secret. This is uh, something the the Pulsar Telos, the non LRF and the LRF version. Y'all remember, y'all, it was announced at SHOT Show. We had pictures of it in the booth. This was last January. This is, you know, it's been almost a year ago. Uh, we have tested this optic in various different um, stages of production. I, we've, we've seen this thing. This is uh, the final production models that we have here in our hands. We've been testing for, uh, gosh, a long time. Uh, and uh, this, this release has been very anticipated when people want to know when it's going to get here. I think that date may have been pushed back a couple times that we, you know, as far as when they actually hit the, hit the U S soil, but they're finally here in some limited capacities right now. Uh, you know w w what you need to do. And I get this all the time, but if you see, if you go to outdoor legacy gear website and you see something's out of stock, don't just, don't just, um, click away and go somewhere else. What I would do and what I, I suggest everybody do, if you see it's out of stock, give us a call. Because there are times when we have product in the warehouse that has that's waiting to be checked in that we know that we have, we just can't put it on the website yet. So if you see something that you want, uh, whether you want to put a deposit on it for later or you want to see, you may get a very good surprise. And our office ma manager, Michaela, may say, you know what, you're in luck. We have it. It's not on the website, but we can get you one you know, shipped out tomorrow. So sure. that is, uh, that is a big deal. But anyway, uh, you want to add something? Yeah, so there? I would just say, yeah, right now it's the middle of November, 2023. You may be watching this in December or you may be watching mm -hmm. this in December of 2024. Uh, but as of <laughs> right now, 
this immediate week. Uh, availability is very, very low on these. They're mm-hmm. difficult to get, <clears throat> waiting for future shipments. <clears throat> Man, I'm all choked up. Waiting for future yeah, shipments right. to come in. Again, uh, these things are coming and going. So guys, super popular. I think once uh, Pulsar USA really gets kind of caught up on some of the back orders, I think we're going to see this thing, you know, sitting around in stock here uh, pretty soon. But you got to remember, it is the busy time of year. Uh, the, you know, November, yeah. December, January, February. It's when guys are out hunting. And this is, again, going to be a, one of the uh, absolute top of the line thermal monoculars on the U.S. market, uh, and it will be, it already is, but will be extremely popular. Very popular. A lot of people have been asking about it, been, you know, getting on the list for for some time now. Now, okay, this is, you need to stay tuned for all this. We're going to be talking about likes and dislikes, as always, showing a ton of yep. video. Uh, thanks to Jason and Ashley. Uh, I'll even thank myself. I got out and got a little bit of video with this thing, too. So, We've been using them for quite a bit, um, but getting out and getting this video, I know is what it's important for y'all showing yardages. Um, we were, like I said, we're going to be showing a bunch of video, but this is like the, the inspector gadget, you know, version of a monocular. It there's is. a lot to see here. Y'all you gotta, there's a lot to see what it does. Jason's going to go through the specs right now. And then we're going to get through the, through the walk. Yeah. So we, Hans keeps talking about us kind of through the process. So we had a prototype unit of this back during the summer. I don't know what month. Um, May, June, July, somewhere. It was really hot. One of those summer months. Yeah, Yeah. I don't remember. They all ran together. (laughs) It was earlier in the summer. I remember having that. Um, So uh, it was extremely similar. There was a couple little, uh, you know, software changes that were made in between there. Don't hold me to this, Hans, but I was thinking we might have even seen this thing like last fall, like maybe October. I know we saw a lot of other things that hadn't come out yet. I think this unit mm. might have been something that we saw then. Then again, I, I know we saw it in January. Then again, we had a, a test unit, prototype unit this summer mm-hmm. and then got these this fall. So, man, we have. We've had a lot of time with them. Really, really like them. And it's no secret if you know Hans or Ashley or I, we are all big fans of the Helion, the Pulsar Helion that this is replacing. And so uh, there's nobody that was anticipating this release any more than Mm -hmm. us and anybody that was going to be any more critical because we believe that the Helion was the gold standard, you know, for the very first one ever released. So, all right, let's jump into the specs. And uh, by the way, stick around. As Hans said, we're going to talk about our likes or dislikes. We're going to also talk about, um, Hans, don't let me forget this. If Mm. you have a Helion, um, should you upgrade? All right. Is this something you need to to Everybody wants to know. If you've already got a Helion, is this where you need to to go dump yours and buy this? We'll talk to you about that as well. All right. Here we go. Um, There's two units. It is the XP50, uh, you know, there's the LRF. They're they're both they're pro uh, XP50 Pro, and there's the LRF and the non LRF. And so the specs are going to be the same on almost everything. So I'm just going to roll through these. 640 by 480 thermal resolution, 17 microns, sub 18 millikelvin on the NETD rating. A 50 millimeter lens, very fast 1.0 lens. Base magnification starts at uh, 2.5 uh, optical. It does have digital zoom, goes up to 10 power. This is not a mistake. Uh, a lot of times people are used to seeing these 640s from Pulsar uh, go up uh, five times and go to like 20 power. This one only goes to 10 power. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Field of view horizontal is 65 feet at 100 yards. It has a detection range, according to Pulsar, of about 1,968 yards. So that's almost 2,000 yards uh, detecting a larger hot object. Moving along, we've got a 50 hertz refresh rate. Almost left that off. Uh, AMOLED (laughs) display screen, a 1024 by 768 display screen resolution. Again, guys, this is a 640 unit, just talking about the display screen. Uh, again, the laser range finder has that unit has a max uh, ranging distance of about 1100 yards. The battery. So this is a new battery. It is called an uh, LPS7I. That's a pretty long oh battery God. number. LPS7I. 
seven i i can't even remember the model numbers for the old batteries i know i, I know remember, so so many batteries but yeah we'll we'll show you this battery um it is uh we, ashley did the runtime test on it he got uh almost nine and a half hours on a bench test runtime. I think he was just a couple minutes short of nine and a half hours. Very, very long time. Mm -hmm. Those batteries right now, fall of 2023 are very difficult to come by. Actually, they're zero. I can just go ahead and tell you. There was, there was, a, <laughs> there was less than, I don't know what it was, That's like a hundred pieces yeah. of these things came into the US, very, very small amount. They were immediately gone. Uh, nobody's got them. They will be coming. Uh, they're going to be $129 a piece. Uh, they will be available uh, whenever they get over here. They're going to have, uh, I think, a container load of these things coming in from Europe. So once they get here, there will be plenty available again at $129. Uh, it has all the normal Pulsar features. I, I hate to even go over all this because if you're looking at this unit, you're probably familiar with what most thermal optics have now. Uh, everything from uh, video recording, audio recording, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi streaming to a smartphone app, multiple mm -hmm. color palettes. I mean, just, just a full mill deal. They've got it all in this unit. Um, it mm -hmm. is as always an IPS seven waterproof rating that is fully submersible in water to three foot for 30 minutes. It's rated for down to negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, here we go. A couple quick things and I will be done. The LRF version weighs one pound, 10 ounces. The non LRF version weighs one pound, eight ounces. It is 8.75 inches long. And I, I measured this myself. I didn't, I didn't want to convert all those from millimeters or centimeters or whatever they measure it. So I, I measured it is 8.75 inches long and it is 2.25 inches wide right here on this lens cap. And if you can see, I'm holding this up, that is the widest part of this. Obviously, the LRF version is, you know, Hans is gonna show that, the LRF is gonna stick down. So it's gonna be, uh, you know, a little bit wider in its widest spot. But you're looking at mm -hmm. uh, two and a quarter by eight and three quarter. Now, real quick, my last thing, oh gosh, I didn't even talk about the price yet. Uh, we'll, we'll do that here, okay. But I, I, everybody's been asking, how does this compare body size wise to the Helion weight and body. So here it is. The Helion was nine and a half inches long and 2.9 inches wide. And it weighed one pound, two ounces. So what you're getting here is a little bit shorter, a little bit narrower. And the, uh, that's what the Telos and the Telos though is going to weigh about on the non LRF version, because we're playing apples and apples, it's going to weigh six ounces more. So it's, it's a little bit smaller, but weighs about six ounces more. And mm -hmm. most important, the price Hans is, this is his fault. He did not tell me he's the yeah. executive producer. He should have rudely interrupted me. And uh, <laughs> I totally forgot I, guys. I'm just going to have to write it on your notes. Hey, please. You know, please I, I, give, I mean, I, I type out notes and give them to you. Yeah, but you didn't give me like the specs. I had to come up with my own specs today. That's Man. the problem. All right. The price on this non LRF version. This is our favorite part. $3,499, $3,500 for this unit where its counterpart, the Helion two XP 50 pro was $39.99, $4,000. So there has been a $500 price drop in this unit, model over model. That is big. And if you're not good at math, that is well over 10% price drop. Now, oh. if you want the laser rangefinder model, it's the same price as the old Helion with, they didn't have a laser rangefinder, $39.99. So you got a $3,500 non LRF, mm -hmm. $4,000 with the LRF we think is a bargain for what you're getting in this unit. Fantastic. Hans, give them the walk around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking while you're doing that, I kind of feel like, uh, you know, Joe Biden's handler, you know, that when he goes into a meeting, he has to write everything out of the script, like, okay, walk into the room, sit down, thank everybody for being there. First you know, I was this, Napoleon. Step, yeah, that was pretty yeah. low. Now Joe Biden. Raise your right hand. Hey, raise your right hand and wave. Any, <laughs> so anyone, that's what the notes are going to be like. Anyone who would like to interview for Hans's job, please submit yeah. your resumes now. <laughs> I guess I did. I called you Napoleon and Joe Biden in the same in show. show. Man, one show. Gosh. 
Mm. So y'all, this um this is the LRF version of the Telos. And I tell you, like I said before, it's like the inspector gadget of uh, monoculars. I feel like this thing is going to like shoot out a couple wheels and you'll be able to ride it like a motorcycle. There's so much <laughs> going on with this thing. Um, so Jason mentioned the battery setup in the battery compartment. It's right here. It's got a little switch you um, release there. It re releases the whole battery. And I mean, this thing right here, uh, you can plug it directly into the wall with a USB-C so it can plug in uh, if you want to plug or, or get extra batteries and plug, you have them charging while you're you're running your monocular with the one inside the battery or inside the monocular, you can do that. Just clicks right into place right there. Four button layout on top. You got two rubber grommets right here by the objective lens. You got one uh, that is a focus adjustment. So one that focuses the uh, the lens and then you've got the other one, which is actually your magnification. So no longer using buttons to magnify the image. It is a continuous zoom. It goes from two and a half to 10 power continuously. So you're just turning that grommet uh, to your desired magnification level. Uh, eyepiece diopter focus right here. Uh, very comfortable rubber eye cap, uh, eye cup right here. One of the coolest things, and I hate doing this, live de demonstrations never work. Um, it has a reversible padded hand strap. Now, why this is important for all of you left-handed people out there, um, you, in the past with the Helion, you just had to deal with it and deal with a right-handed a monocular strap. Now it completely switches over to the left-hand side if you're left-handed. So you can switch it um, you know, back and forth, basically however you want to do it. It's one of the coolest things. So I, I told you, Jason, when we got it, the tool, two most um, popular features probably are going to be that hand strap, which seems very small, but yeah. there's going to be a lot of people out there that love it. And the continuous zoom on being able to go incrementally or, or continuously going to two and a half to 10 power. I think that's about it. You got the, this one, the laser range finders on the bottom. This has a 50 millimeter objective lens on it with a very solid uh, plastic lens cap. Like you said, it is a little bit, a little bit heavier, but when I, when I'm holding it, um, it does feel a lot like the Helion, except now with the laser range finder, you got this little reverse shark fin is what I'll call it. <laughs> this is the kind, you know, looking at the camera, this thing looks like a submarine <laughs> I mean, with, that, the, with this little thing at the bottom. Uh, we're having fun at, at the Telos. Uh, well, as you say, it is, uh, there is a lot of, a lot going on, but a lot of good things. There's been a lot of good changes. We'll talk about um, who it's good for. We're going to talk about our likes and dislikes. We're going to talk about, yeah, like Jason said, the difference. A lot of people are tuning in because they want to know, I've got a Helion XP 52 Pro. Do I need to upgrade? These are all important questions. Um, you know, if you have a Pulsar Axion XM 30F, yes, you may want to upgrade to this. <laughs> That's definitely, you're going to see a huge improvement uh, from that one to this Telos. But uh, Jason, let's talk a little bit about who this optic is good for. It again, with the two and a half to 10 power, <clears throat> which is a change from the 20 power, um, are people really going to miss 20 power base magnet or 20 power high end, uh, magnification? All right. I'm going to say this and this is, there's going to be, gonna guys go that they're going to boo <laughs> from the, the bleachers. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get into our likes and dislikes yet. We'll do that here in just a minute, but actually, um, for me, not going to 20 power is a like, <laughs> I, if <laughs> I was in charge tomorrow, um, all thermal optics would be brought down in digital zoom because mm -hmm. it is useless when you get out there to that, that end of the zoom. Yeah. And it's not quite as big a deal with, with this unit because as Hans has showed, you're twisting this. So I don't end, I don't even go to 10. I mean, so I'm not all the way up there, uh, but you know, where you know, like the Helion and, and other thermals where you're pressing a button and you're just going up through the magnifications, it's a continuous double. The problem is, is the way that you, you normally do that is you go up, 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 and then it rolls back around to your base mag. When I get up there <laughs> into that 20 or whatever, that top magnet, I'm just mad because I got to press the button another time <laughs> to get back. Cause it's like, yeah. I, I've just entered yeah. something that is totally useless to me and I want to get back. So I would say a positive for me is that it doesn't do there's, that. There, there's going to be somebody yeah. that disagrees with me. That's looking three miles at something. 
but I just don't think at that low resolution, it's really going to help you that much. I mean, I say low resolution by the time you've digitally zoomed to that far. So for me, not so much. Yeah. So yeah, you mentioned somebody being upset. I can see people run into the internet after seeing this and being like, see, Pulsar sticking it to us there. It's only going up to 10 power now. And, it, and the other ones went up to 20 power. Y'all, anybody that uses thermal optics uh, and has used thermal optics regularly or, or yep. digital optics, and, you, and you're familiar with digital zoom where it cuts your yeah. resolution every time you double magnification, you know that once you get, even if you get to like 14 power, 15, 16, yeah. I mean, you're getting to where... Yeah, it, it for us and for me and Jason, it is a just a, a button skip. It, it <laughs> We're is. just skipping through it to get to back to native magnification. But I, I twenty don't, power, don't miss it at no, all. I don't want to. I don't want to hammer this and keep going beat this dead horse. But I'll say one thing, and so this is how somebody may be saying, "Yeah, you guys are just shills," and you're just saying that because it's not there. If you've ever called and talked to me in the last ten years, and you've asked me the question on any thermal optic and said, "What is the max?" digital zoom. I say the same thing every time. I don't know because it's not a number that matters to me. I'm cramming my head full of information. I want to know the base <sighs> magnification. I cannot tell you what the max magnification is on any mm -hmm. optic because I don't care because <laughs> it's a useless feature to me and to most mm -hmm. people. So anyway, moving on Hans, uh, I think this unit, you know, you kind of ask who it's good for. We haven't gotten our likes and dislikes, but let's talk about that. Um, I know one thing we didn't discuss is what the ID range is. It's a very, very long range, long ways. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know, Hans, four or 500 yards. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a really, really, really good 640 image. What you would expect out of the, the Helion uh, or any of the other Pulsar 640s, the Thermion 2 XP50 Pro, any of that. It's that, it's that basic image. Um, so a long ways on a hog or a coyote, even further on a, on a deer. And I know, Somebody's going, what's a long ways? But I mean, four or 500 uh, yards? What do you say, Hans? I mean, yeah, at the low end, four or 500 yards. Um, I would say that the ID range with this uh, is very comparable to what the Helion 2 XP50 yeah. Pro models were. Not just any Helion, not the original Helion XP50 or even the Helion. The Helion 2 XP50 Pro. It's going to be on par with that. So low end, four or 500 yards. I mean, if we're talking about large animals, yes, it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it could be seven, 800 yards. But ID range, I mean, it's going to have the best ID range on any handheld monocular on the market at this point. I, I mean, uh, comparative to any other brand that, uh, out there right now. So uh, who is this good for? Uh, I hate to say optics are you know good for everybody. The Helion was the number one selling thermal you know, especially yeah. the, the XP50 is the number one selling 640 thermal monocular since it was released in 2017. Uh, this guys, I mean, unless somebody just does something crazy, this will be too. I mean, Pulsar is known for making these high quality 640 handhelds. It's pretty good for everybody. The two and a half power base mag. If I created this unit for myself, it would be a two power. That's my ideal. But I can live with the two and a half. I lived with it in my XP50 uh, Helion. So it's it's fine. I like it. I can use it even hog hunting, even here in East Texas when I'm in the woods, the brush. I can make it work. It's it's not bad. On the fields, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is the happy medium. This way, the coyote hunter that's up there mm -hmm. in the Midwest and he wants, you know, longer range getting a better look at that coyote or that fox or whatever that animal is way out there, he gets a little more magnification with that, especially mm -hmm. when you step up, you go to five power with the two power, you'd only go to four. So I think they're split in the middle. I will tell you, and I will go ahead and say this. If this was a three power, I would say it's a really nice unit. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you coyote hunters are going to like it. And I would go hang it up and I would get something else. I could not yeah. I just can't yeah. use a three power handheld for what I do. The two and a half, no problem. I can make that work. So I, I hate to say it's good for everybody. And there's obviously going to be situations where, you know, somebody is really, really, really going to be hunting in tight quarters in the brush, in the woods. They can't mm -hmm. see 30, 40, 50 yards. Okay. Probably not for you, but generally I'd say this is a pretty good all around. So uh, yes. I, and I, I do feel like two and a half power for me is also the ceiling. It couldn't go any higher than that. We, we and I hunt very, mm -hmm. uh, not wide open <laughs> spaces. If you're, if you're down in the, I will, you know, to be honest with y'all though, 
I mean, if you hunt in the woods and thick brush and thick woods, if you're, you know, you see coyote hunters that are sitting down on a tree and in log yeah. sets. Yeah. With a shotgun. I mean, two and a half power is going to be, is not going to be easy. I mean, in that case, you almost need a one power, Yeah, you, uh, do. you know, in, in those type of like thick wood hunting, coyote hunting, sure. hog hunting, whatever you're doing, but two and a half power is, you know, is a good all around magnification. It does cover the vast majority of all the hunters out there in the, in the United States in every different kind of condition. So uh, they did what they could do. You know, there's, there's only one, uh, you know, of these models, as far as magnification, you can't choose other magnification teloses, just like you couldn't with the Helion uh, in the later days. They did have, they did have in the early days, of early Helion, days. they had a couple yeah. of different, yeah, the choices, but so let's talk about the the likes and dislikes. Jason, we'll start with the dislikes like you like to do, get the bad news well, out of the You've way got first. one that, that you brought up that I think is a good point. I, I do. I've got one small one that's related to that. So go ahead. So what I do notice with this, um, we also we need to talk about the 18 millikelvin rated sensor on it yeah, too. So we, we can talk about that in alliance. Yeah. Um so the we talked about the continuous zoom uh, function up here on by the objective lens where you turn this dial and you are uh, uh, you can raise the magnification and I've got this strap on the left hand side of it and it's completely throwing me off it's like messing with my brain right now but so what I do notice when I'm out in the field hunting with it I'm using two hands with this a lot more often than I would with the Helion. Uh, the Helion, all the, you know, the button functions, you, you're raising and lowering the magnification with a button push with this, you're, you're using your other hand to turn this dial, you know, in the front while you're holding the monocular up to your eye. So you are going to be using two hands with this more often. Now, you know, given the Helion, you were still focusing with your other hand, you had to focus the objective lens when you're looking at obstacle, you know, objects at different distances. Uh, but this one, you know, you're working that magnification there too. So you will be using two hands more often, how that matters, where that matter. It may not matter at all. It may be a minor deal to you. I don't see it being a big deal to most people. It wasn't a big deal to me. Uh, but you know, if you're trying to carry a rifle in one hand or sticks in one hand and this in the other, you, you know, just, just keep that in mind that you're going to be using two hands a little bit more often than you normally would. As far as the other dislikes, I mean, uh, that was it. <laughs> that really was. It. Oh, I will say this. If you use the Helion uh, for a long period of time, the buttons will mess you up because they have changed the record button. It used to be right here by the eyepiece. Now it's the third button mm -hmm. from the eyepiece. And it has, again, played so many tricks on my mind. So they kind of changed the button layout a little bit. If you never owned a Helion, you won't care. If you're like us and we've used a Helion, you're going to be hitting the wrong buttons for a little bit <laughs> until you figure it out till you, till you learn it. Okay. But I that's got a, it. I got a small dislike, um, and it's just me, and this is one of those learned things, and you're going to get over this when you own it and use it every night. But as Hans was showing, this is your focus ring. This is your zoom ring. And uh, sometimes I would reach up here to focus, and I would zoom it. Or I would reach up here to zoom, which I don't do much, and I would focus. And I was like, and, and it's there's a clear distinction. There, there's no, I mean, even if you had on gloves, you, you go to the front or you come back here, it's just a matter of kind of learning that. And I just caught myself doing it. I was a little frustrated several times because it's new. Again, I'm not used to doing that. A lot of times I'm not even thinking about this zoom ring being here. So I reach up to get a focus and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm zooming in. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell you something else as a little bit of a Testament here. I'm going to go over to my likes, I guess the image quality is very, very good. And I'll tell you what I did one night. I had this thing zoomed up, um, off of 2.5 to about 3.2 or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know it. I was using it and I used it for a while. And I was like, man, seems like more magnification. I mean, I was like, man, things look kind of close. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I'm zoomed in. I didn't even know. I mean, the image quality looked yeah. great. So, I mean, just, just making a point, even, you know, I wasn't quite doubled up. So I wasn't quite down to a 384 resolution or a 320 resolution, I should say. But I was like, 
Mm-hmm. I was kind of impressed. I was like, oh my goodness. And so, you know, Hans brought that up, but this continuous Zoom, it is cool. Sometimes I do want a little bit of Zoom, but I may not want five power. Or maybe yeah. I want six, but I don't want, you know, allowing you to just slowly go up where you need to go to. I think that's pretty cool. That's a like. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you something else. We've already talked about the hand strap, wore that thing out. Really, really mm-hmm. like that. I'm always a padded hand strap guy. The fact that if you're left-handed or left eye dominant, uh, now you can swap that very easily. I'm going to tell you something I like. All right, this is the battery. Removing this battery. Mm-hmm. Look at this right here. All right, this is so simple. This is no nothing revolutionary, but right there, you can't really see it. That's a USB-C port. So what that means is no more cradle charging. You do not have <laughs> to have a cradle. You don't get a cradle. You don't need a cradle. You can if you want, uh, which is the way I've been doing it. I plug in the uh, USB-C cable right here, and there's a little uh, green LED that comes on. It's, it's, it's on when the unit's on. It's on when it's mm-hmm. charging. It lets you know, you know that it's charging. I just plug it in that way. But if you've got multiple batteries and you know, you're like, I got to charge these batteries, you can go plug this in anywhere, whether it's your pickup truck or the wall or whatever, USB-C. You don't need to haul around a cradle. Everybody has got a USB-C cable somewhere. I mean, you Mm -hmm. got one laying around. So going to be very easy to charge that. I really, really like that feature. Um, Hans, what else on your likes? Anything else there? I I think you've, you've hit all the, the major prices there. Prices come come down. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Let's talk about how this compares a little bit to the Helion and, and also the price. So, um, the the big difference that, that people will talk about is first of all the millikelvin rated sensor. This is an eighteen minus eighteen millikelvin millikelvin sub, rated sensor. Sub eighteen, sorry. Sub eighteen, yep. where the the same thing was with the Helion two XP fifty Pro. Mm-hmm. It was what sub twenty five. Yeah. So you're what we know is that the lower the millikelvin number, the more sensitive that thermal sensor is, and what it will do is it will be. Um, it will be able to cut through a lot of the moisture and the humidity in the air uh, better than some of the things out there that are at 40 millikelvin or, or whatever, it may, whatever it may be at. So right now, I mean, Jason, is there anything lower than this Telos as far as sub 18? Not that I, not that I know I, of. Not that I, um, I mean, yeah, not that, so, not that I know of either. So I think that the real question comes, we can put numbers down on a piece of paper all day long. And the question is, is is this a big upgrade? Is it a big deal? Mm -hmm. Do you need to go sell your Helion? And, um, first of all, we need to, we need to specify which Helion, the original Helion that came out in 2017 or the Helion two or the Helion Mm -hmm. two pro. I mean, so we've got, we've got uh, years of Helion models. So I need to specify that. I would, let's just talk about the pro, you know, because, I think that the the older XP50 and and the Helion 2 XP50, you know, I don't know. That's they're they're older now. So, mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about the Pro because it's been around for, you know, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My opinion, there's going to be a lot of dealers that don't like what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> and Pulsar USA and Pulsar in Europe's probably not going to like this and I know that our good buddy Ludus is watching this. I don't see a huge reason to upgrade this if you've got a Helion 2 XP50 Pro and you're perfectly happy with it. I think the reason to upgrade this is if there's one of these features that you really want or you like. You say, oh man, I like that zoom. That's going to work really good for me. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that hand strap. I'm left-handed or I'm left eye dominant. If I could switch that, that is, I mean, you know, that's worth every bit. Absolutely. I think if you are uh, got that unit and you're getting to the end of your warranty and you're the kind of guy that says, listen, man, I, I you know, I, I want to have a warranty on these optics. You know, these are expensive. I don't want to be running it without mm-hmm. a warranty. It's about time for an upgrade. I'd like to get the new, the latest, the greatest. Yes, I think there is a there's a reason to upgrade. If you got a Helion, uh, you know, in the last year and you like it and you're perfectly mm-hmm. satisfied with it, uh, 
I can't give you a reason that you need to go, you know, dumpster fire, sell yours, fire sale, it's all over, got to get rid of it and run and go buy this. I mean, I, I, I like it. I think it's a, I think there are upgrades to this unit. This sub 18 millikelvin, how is that going to perform? Uh, you know, is it going to outperform? There can be some conditions and really bad conditions where you might see a little bit of improvement in that wet, humid, nasty weather fog, you may get a little bit of benefit. I do think we're mm -hmm. starting to split hairs. I think we're getting to the point where you've got to put them side by side to see it, or you've got to have a lot of experience behind thermal optics to appreciate that. I don't think that the average guy who just picks it up and he looks through an, a Helion and he looks through this is going to see any kind of big difference in that. And in normal everyday right. average conditions, I don't think you're going to get a huge benefit out of that. So uh, again, that's yeah. not a slam on this. I'm just being honest yeah. with you as a guy who makes his living, you know, selling these optics. I want to sell you one. And I think it's a fantastic scope or, or monocular. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we definitely want to sell optics. But I will say the biggest the biggest case for upgrading, and I will say that and this is a this is already playing out to be true, is if you have a Helion uh to XP50 Pro or Helion or whatever, and you want a laser rangefinder. That yep. is the biggest reason to upgrade, y'all. You're getting the Telos XP50 with the laser rangefinder for $39.99, which is the original price of the whole old Helion 2 XP50 without a laser rangefinder. So you spend the same money that you did before in the other one, and you get the laser rangefinder. This is going to be the biggest seller of the two, the non-LRF and the LRF. The LRF is going to be the biggest seller. It's, it's the one that we've had the most orders for, the most pre-orders for. Um, that's what people want. And at $39.99 with a laser rangefinder, that's the best value. That's the best deal. It's a better deal than what you got on your original Helion. So that is a big benefit in upgrading from what you had to now if you feel like you want a laser rangefinder. And I'll tell you, a laser rangefinder isn't a necessity. Being honest with you, it's mm -hmm. not a necessity for everybody. But you know what? It sure is nice to have. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> you know, it is nice to have. And and if you can get that and pay the same money that you did for your older Helion, that's a that's a great yeah. deal. So I want to say three things. And I'll be done. One, I agree with what Hans just said. Three if you don't <laughs> need, <laughs> if you don't need the, the laser range finder, save five hundred dollars. Put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. There's no need in buying it. It is a little bit bigger on that front end. So if you don't need it, don't get it. But it is cool. I agree with you there. All right. So mine does not have it. You, you can see that I don't need it. Um, all right. I don't need it, but things. I wanted it. <laughs> uh, two, two, two things that I want to I'm speak a to. Uh, these are two things that that I've, I've heard ask and, and uh, I've heard maybe objections to. One is the size. Yes, this is a big unit. Sure is. If you see seen Helion, it's a big unit. Okay. If you are, and, and this is, I'm trying to find the nice way to say this. If this is what you do, if your hobby, if your passion mm. is night hunting and, you know, this is what you do and you're out there and you're doing it and you enjoy it and you have a lot of fun and you're spending the kind of money that it's, look, these aren't cheap, 3,500 bucks, you know, I get it. It's a lot of money. But if you have that budget and you're willing to do it, um, the size is not what should stop you from buying this, nor should it have stopped you on the uh, Helion because what you're getting, you cannot get in a smaller unit. You, it does not exist. Mm -hmm. You cannot get this and I'm going to roll this into, um, to, to me, if, if you say the size is too big, I'm just not doing it. That's fine. If you can get by with the image quality of a smaller unit, that is great. And you can save some money doing it. But if you're serious about it and you want the best image quality, you're going to have to get a bigger unit period. That's the way that it is. Even if you look at the competition for this unit from, uh, you know, one other manufacturer in particular, it's, it's this big unit. It, that's just what you're going to get. And again, I know I'm going to get into this and then I'm going to say something that's wrong and then I'm going to get, you know, schooled and I need all the schooling I can get. But my understanding, which you could, you know, put in a thimble, is you cannot put this si size sensor, you can't put this in the like Axion body style. You can't mm -hmm. get everything you need with focal length 
and with the size of the sensor in a little bitty, small, compact, lightweight unit. That's my understanding. So it's a trade-off. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to be the next question. Hey, wait a minute. Those Axions, those XGs, those are 640. They even have a laser range finder. They're on sale. Man, those things are cheap right now. Why would I buy this over that? Image quality. There is yeah. zero comparison in the image quality you're going to get out of this that you're going to get out of an Axion XG. So should you never buy an Axion XG? No, look at the price. There's this big price difference for what you're getting, a thousand dollars difference. So it's money. You buy that when that's what your budget is, or if you really want that small, lightweight size, that's that's a trade-off. Okay, the trade-off mm -hmm. is is size and money. And so I just wanted to bring that up because I've I've had uh, a couple guys ask me like, number one, why is it so big? Why don't they put that in an Axion body? Well, my understanding is they can't. If they could, mm. they would. They can't. A lot of this is physics and science. If you're going to get this sensor, this focal length, you're going to have to have a bigger physical unit to do it. So that mm. for whatever that's worth. And also, let's not kid ourselves. You got a nine and a half hour battery in this thing, too. So, yeah. you know, do you want to trade off? You want to make this thing smaller and, and have half the battery life? We can, you know, I'm sure Pulsar could do that as well. But uh, again, nothing wrong with the Axions as a more budget friendly, smaller unit. I just keep getting asked that. Why is this so big? And why don't they put it in an Axion? That's my so, understanding. And if next year they have this in an Axion, you can take everything I said and throw it out the window. Which is probably <laughs> smart. So the Helions were, uh, I would say the, the, the king of the mountain when it came to yep. monoculars and the, the Telos is, will retain the title at this point. Uh, Telos, fantastic. Uh, two thumbs up from us. Give us a call. Let us know what you thought of the review. If you're interested in purchasing this, hey, I saw your review. I liked it, but I still have questions. Or I need to know how does it compare to this or or, or what direction you want to go in. We'd love to talk to you. Um, me, Jason, or uh, our other salesman, Ashley. I use his full other name. 877-350-1818. Uh, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. Uh, we will, we're doing this full time you know, eight to five central standard time, Monday through Friday. We don't work on the weekends. We've got to have a little time off to hunt and do everything else we need to do. Uh, but we are full time in this, taking your phone calls all day, every day, as well as producing this video, producing other videos. Ashley is working like a madman on YouTube right now. He's over at row ETX on YouTube, uh, pumping out videos, several videos a week at this point. I'm doing videos on my YouTube channel at Hans ETX. Uh, Jason's doing videos on his, uh, on, on the company, uh, YouTube page at outdoor legacy gear. So go check out all of our content. I, man, I'm pretty biased, but I don't know if there's really that many other dealers in this industry that is, that is putting out more content and, and free content, free information about these optics than we are. So uh, to all the other dealers out there, you're welcome. We'll, we'll wait for our Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shot across the bow, even to our Just friends out there. We've got, yeah, even our friends. we got a lot of friends in the industry, and we love we them. So anyway, um, yeah, give us a call, 877-350-1818, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. Uh, we would love to have your business, and we appreciate everything uh, that y'all do for us, which is allows us to have the greatest job on the planet. So, uh Go check us out. All the socials already mentioned YouTube on Instagram, uh, on Facebook, on, uh, is there any others? Instagram, I don't know. You, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, I think you've got yeah. about all of them. Hansi's okay. Texas, Ashley, uh, row ETX and outdoor legacy. Uh, and then, uh, stay tuned as we continue on closing out the year, we had to kind of squeeze in, uh, these two reviews cause we got so much coming up I and mean, we've talked about it a lot, but we have our best of the year awards coming up and that's something that we've done for many years now but we uh, present awards to these manufacturers for the best optics in different categories we've got uh, at least seven shows jason I don't maybe know, we bunch. might I can't every year we add ads, one yeah. <laughs> so we always have to add a, ca a category because they start making our, our dealers keep our manufacturers keep making these crossover optics that kind of go into different categories but we've got a lot of content which means a lot of work for me and Jason to be able to keep up, but we will be here every Thursday. All right, guys, we appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this review. As always, you know where to find us, outdoorlegacygear.com, or give us a call. 
look forward to seeing y'all next week. Between now and then, y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes. <laughs>